Hello and welcome to Highlight Correct Answers. My name is Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. I recently received a question asking about how to update a worksheet that had multiplication tables so that his granddaughter knows if she entered the correct or incorrect answer. And we're gonna answer that question in this video. Exercise one. In this exercise, we're gonna look at the problem of manually creating rules for highlighting correct answers. For example, Let's say we set up some multiplication problems like this. Then we want to highlight correct answers. For that, we could set up a custom conditional formatting rule for each cell, like this. Conditional formatting, highlight cell rules. If it is equal to the correct answer, let's go with green. If a correct answer is entered, we get the green formatting. And if the answer is incorrect, we have no highlighting. And if we wanted, we could take the time to set up additional rules to highlight incorrect answers. But in this case, we'll keep it simple and just highlight the correct answers. And this approach is very cumbersome because we'd literally have to go in and create a separate rule for each and every cell. And we could do that, but that's obviously gonna take a lot of time. So is there an easier way? Yes. Let's go to the next exercise, exercise two. Now the first step is to actually separate the components of the equation. In other words, instead of typing the equation in a single cell, we wanna separate the components. That way our formula can reference the individual components. For example, I'm gonna store one and one in separate cells, two and one separate cells, three one separate cells, four one separate cells, and you get the idea. That way we can set up a rule that simply references those cell values. Now the trick to working with conditional formatting formulas is to write a formula that returns a true or false value. For example, Let's say this is one, and let's say this is two, and let's say this is four. So what we would do is we'd say equals, and we'd say does this, okay, does the value entered equal, and then we do the equation. So it would be this cell times this cell, and close the paren, enter. And now what we have is an Excel formula that returns true or false, and we can fill this formula down. And here we get true, because it's the correct answer. This one is true, and then this one is false. And let's just test it out. What if we enter two here, that's false, and what if we enter four here, and what if we enter three here? And now what we have is a formula that returns true or false appropriately. What I can do then is I can simply Control C, copy that formula, and then I can highlight this entire range and then I can go to conditional formatting, new rule. And now I can say, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And then I can control V paste in the formula. Now, if we wanted to, we could just write this formula here instead of copying and pasting, but it's a little easier to get your formula working and then just copy paste. And then we can pick the format. So here we wanna go with a cell fill of this, and then we wanna go with a font color of this. And then we can click OK and OK. And now if the student enters the correct answer, we get green, correct answer green, correct answer green. If we do an incorrect answer, then the formatting is not applied. And this should work all the way down. Four, five, two. Let's do some incorrect values. Five, let's do nine, let's do seven, and let's do a correct answer of 10. And we actually don't need this formula here, so I can clear this out. And that's how we can set up a conditional formatting rule that uses a formula that we can use for the entire range. But what if we wanted to do more than just multiplication tables? What if we wanted to do addition problems, subtraction problems? Well, that leads us to the next exercise, exercise three. So once again, we'll start by writing an Excel formula that returns true or false appropriately. So for this, we're gonna use the switch function, equals switch. Now here we're gonna look at this value and we're basically gonna say if it's an X, then we wanna do multiplication. So we wanna do this times this, comma. If on the other hand, C6 is a plus, then it's gonna be this plus this. If on the other hand, it's a subtraction operator, then it's gonna be this minus this. And if on the other hand, it's a division operator, then it's gonna be this divided by this. Close function and enter. And this is just a first step, which is to determine what the correct answer is. So if we fill this formula down, we should verify that this is returning the correct result. So if it's a multiplication operator, we get one, that's good. If it's addition, we get four, that's good. If it's subtraction, we get one, that's good. And if it's division, we get two, that's good. So two times four is eight, three plus three is six, 
8 minus 4 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Okay, so this switch function looks like it is actually returning the correct value. Now all we have to do is compare that to the answer that was entered. Enter. And now we can fill this down. Now what we need to do is control C, copy that entire formula, select our range, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula, and control V paste. And now we can define the formatting. So we're going to go with a fill of this and a font color of this. And now we don't need this. So now if it's one times one equals one, that looks good. If it's two, no, three, no, and this looks good. This is two plus two equals four, that looks good. If it's a two, it's wrong, that's fine. Three minus two is one. Four divided by two is two. Eight, what if it's seven, that looks good. Three plus three is six, and on and on we go, and I think this looks like it's working. So those are a couple of ways that we can apply conditional formatting to highlight correct answers. Thanks so much for joining me, have a great day. Hey Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table, and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University. 